The history of mankind has been a long and bloody struggle between nations, groups, and individuals, always trying to claim a bit more land to call their own. Other people have usually been around to try to stop these invaders, but what happens when the territory in question isn't on Earth? If this is your first time visiting the channel, make sure to subscribe, and click the little bell to be notified every time a new Second Thought video is released. Back in 1967, the governments of the United States, the UK, and the Soviet Union thought it might be a good idea to agree to some ground rules for the use of outer space. The Outer Space Treaty, now agreed upon by over a hundred nations, prohibits any country from placing nuclear weapons in outer space or on any celestial body. It also explicitly forbids any nation from claiming a space resource, such as the moon or a planet. And so far it's worked out. To date, no government has attempted to claim a celestial body. But what if that were to change? Let's say North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un got it into his head that he wanted to own the moon, and somehow managed to launch a manned mission and successfully land North Koreans on the moon. They plant the flag and a little statue of the glorious leader, and hunker down to defend their new prize from all invaders. Now what? Realistically, Kim Jong-un would likely get a stern talking to by the other members of the treaty, and suffer even more sanctions here on Earth, and the incident would be forgotten. If, however, the North Koreans managed to construct some form of delivery system for nuclear warheads on the moon, the global response would probably be far more severe. But what if an individual tried to claim a celestial body? While the Outer Space Treaty does say non-government entities will require authorization to operate in outer space and are the responsibility of their parent nation, it does not explicitly state that an individual cannot claim a planet or moon. With the recent success of the SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket, we need to consider the possibility that Elon Musk could go full supervillain and claim Mars as his own. But how would that work exactly? What does it take to legally own something the size of Mars? The doctrine of first possession, basically the legal equivalent of finders keepers, states that in order to claim something, you must first show intention and control, and possession goes into effect as soon as those two criteria are met. Simply planting a SpaceX flag on the red planet is enough to show the intent of ownership, but how do you control a whole planet? The easiest way would probably be to build simple roads and tiny outposts over much of the planet's surface. Once a road is built, you could reasonably claim a certain amount of territory on either side of it. Enough roads and you've secured the whole planet. Of course, the idea of first possession is not universally agreed upon, so this claim would be iffy at best. Back on Earth, American authorities would likely step in and demand the claim be redacted. If Elon refused, further actions would be taken if the members of the treaty considered his claim to be a threat to the Earth. The only way to ensure complete ownership of Mars would be to do it all at once. You'd have to send enough manpower, materials, and supplies to establish a self-sufficient colony and leave the Earth behind entirely. If you could do that, the only way to get you to renounce your claim would be for other nations to physically come to Mars and force you. If Elon Musk did decide to establish himself as Emperor of Mars, the nations of Earth would have quite the predicament on their hands. There currently aren't any space agencies prepared to send a manned mission to the Red Planet, which would give Elon more time to build his empire. And by the time NASA or the ESA arrived, the Mars colony might have a 10 or 20 year head start. And it might not even be safe to land on the surface if the Martian citizens are hostile against Earthling invaders. Of course, this is all wild speculation. Odds are Elon Musk won't go crazy and establish a galactic empire off Earth. But the fact remains that as successes of private groups and governments begin to snowball and space becomes more accessible, rules and regulations governing ownership of space will need to change. Will Earth law even apply to eventual space colonies, or will regulations vary by celestial body? What do you think? Will we end up with a new Wild West out in space, or will the governments of the world work together to make space exploration a free and peaceful experience? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe and click the little bell to join the notification squad. To watch more content like this video, check out these playlists. I've also just added a new reward for my Patreon supporters, so if you want to get a behind the scenes look at Second Thought and support the channel, check out our Patreon page. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.